Ashe, 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 Thanks, man. Because, you know, you can't talk about divination work without going to the, the father of divination himself. That's a ruler. So for y'all don't know about the Orishas, don't even trip. I'm a, I'm finna do I'm finna give a lecture on the Orishas, and then I'm gonna give a lecture on every single Orisha. So my people can know. Because y'all need to make y'all ancestors altars. Y'all need to be talking to y'all ancestors. You see what I'm saying? The ancestors is with you. You don't need no altar to do that, but you want to do that. Trust me. Hold on, y'all. With all due respect, family. With all due respect, family. We not talk about no divination work and we not going to bring the God on. Cool. We good now. So look, divination work. Let's talk about it. Okay. So first off, just a little quick mini who this is. This is a ruler. Okay. Um, this version of this statue is actually comes from the, let me see how can I word this to somebody that does it, that, that is new. Okay, so you have something called pantheons, all right? So you got the Yoruba. Yoruba is a tribe out of Africa. This is actually where the Asians get majority of their features from. The real original Asiatic people are us, if you didn't know that. But this version, this statue right here, it wouldn't look like this in, in, in Africa. In the Yoruba version, it wouldn't look like this. This is actually the Cuba, the Cuban version, all right? So in the Yoruba or the African pantheon, his name is or Amelia. But in the Cuban pantheon or Louisiana version, he would be called Orula. So you got three that we mostly use. You got the Yoruba version, you got the Cuban version, and then you got the Louisiana version. So this is why they call it Louisiana voodoo, Louisiana hoodoo, things like that. You get what I'm saying? And then some of the Orishas, their names, okay, so Papa Legba. He is called Papa Legba because of he's the gatekeeper. He's one of the very first Orishas. I'm going to give lectures separate about all this, y'all. I'm just, we talk about divination work, so I got to give you a little bit of a little saucy sauce. You get what I'm saying? All right, so understand that Papa Legba, who is the gatekeeper, right? Because you have many different spiritual families. So when you talk about the Orishas, that's just one. Of the many spiritual families. Right? Understand that. That's just one of the many spiritual families. Now, this is very powerful. This ain't nothing to play with. I'm letting you know right now. When you start going to your ancestors. And you like. Because you can talk to your ancestors without statues. Okay? You're not worshiping a statue. Let's understand that. Because this is just a statue right here. So you're not worshiping a statue. We give our power to nothing but ourselves. We don't pray to none but ourselves and we praise each other. When you're working with the Orishas per se, because I'm just, I'm happy to talk about the Orishas, all right? You're working with spiritual deities, okay? Not entities. An entity and a deity is two different things, okay? An entity and a deity is two completely different things. When you're dealing with this part of your ancestors, let's just say the Orishas, you are going to a higher form of spirituality. So like I say, in Africa, in African pantheon or the Yoruba, to be exact, Yoruba, right? He would be called Papa Legba. I mean, Ishwa. Ishwa. But when you come to Cuba and you get to Louisiana, he becomes Papa Legba. Okay. In the Yoruba version, Orula is called Unromelia, or however you want to enunciate it. But it's O-R-U-N-M-I-L-I-A, okay? But then when you go Cuba and you're going Louisiana, who do you get Orula, okay? So it gets deep. There's many different names because there's different pantheons because you have to understand when we fell in frequency, they were taking our ancient ways that we could, that we communicated with each other away from us. Okay. So as they took that away from us, our ancestors had to hide this version of worship or magic. Let's not call it worship magic because you are in a physical body. So some things that you're trying to do, you're going to need outside help from the cosmic forces. 
in the spiritual forces, right? So this is what Orishas come in at. You can do the same thing without connecting to the Orishas or the angelic realms. But understand that you are in a body. You are a spirit and soul in a body that's having a human experience or a God experience. So when certain a lot of things is coming against you, like I always told you, I like cold lockdown. That's a spiritual thing. That's a higher form of physics. That's quantum physics and metaphysics being worked against you. You get what I'm saying? When you see all these colors and all that shapes, this is all. This is all a form of metaphysics. See the color at the top? See the color? Could have been any color. They chose red. See the shape that, it, that the container is in? That's all a form of metaphysics being worked against you, which you're not aware of because you you in like cold lockdown with your pineal gland jilt shut. So this is why you want to go to your ancestors because they have the spiritual eye. Crown chakra. See what I'm saying? Crown chakra. Right? They have that bird's eye view. They can see above and see some shit you can't see because you only because you in the vessel unless you tapping all the way in. You feel me? But you will still need assistance because you're going against malevolent entities. Okay? You have positive entities, but you have a lot of malevolent or bad entities or devils. Because they taught you that they were demons. But we the demons. See how they play tricks on you? We the demons. The demons is the titan energies that's in you. The 72 feminine energies. Those are the demons. And 7 plus 2 is 9, which is completion. And 9 ether being. You have 72 demonic forces in you, feminine energies. And you have 72 angelic entities in you. I mean, uh, 72 angelic energies in you. Or angels, if you want to call them that. And these are all energies as well. 72 times 2 equals 144. All right, so this is where you get your 144 from. But we stand right here. We stand right up in here, all right? That's why you want to go. And I'll say this. I'll repeat myself because I'm going to make a separate lecture. I'm just talking about this on Instagram because we start talking about fucking readings. I don't do no readings, man. I wouldn't even play with my ancestors like that until you don't, I'm, you can get a reading from me and then take your money. What they going to do to me? I'm not worried about you. I'm worried about them. They sent me here to do a job. I can't fuck them over. The last thing I worry about is fucking you over. But to say I do readings, that would be considered a part of divination work. And all you motherfuckers is out there acting like y'all doing readings. I hope you understand the 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 energy that you are have that you are building up for yourself, especially playing with my name. When you posing as divine insight and you hitting people up and you say you're doing readings, that's divination work. That's a spiritual thing. So now you're going to open yourself up to all type of attacks from the spiritual realm. I guarantee you the motherfucker that made that fake page going through hell right now. Because you fucking with you fucking with you. I'm telling you, you don't fuck with spiritual people, man. That's the last thing you want to do. You better go fuck with somebody that ain't on that level. Y'all remember how it was when we grew up? We like, we ain't fuck with that voodoo shit. We ain't fuck with that. <laughs> we ain't walking past the door. Them niggas tripping in there. We go. <laughs> Better have the same respect for my motherfucking name. Nigga, I ain't fucking with God. Shit, he be on that shit, shit. He fucking with them energies, nigga. You. So look. Divination work is a spiritual thing, man. And the master of divination... Or the Orisha that presides over that particular line of spiritual work is a ruler. He's the father of knowledge, wisdom, and divination work. Okay? So, now what's divination work? This is going to blow y'all mind. Do you know you've been practicing divination work your whole time? The whole time? A lot of y'all don't believe in magic, but you've been doing it your whole time. How many times have you went and looked at the zodiac sign? You look at your zodiac Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Especially in Chicago, how we grew up. Nigga, they used to call G WGCI. They used to have a whole song called, Now who's this on that birthday line? It's Jasmine. It's Jasmine. And it's today your birthday. Oh, yes, it is. You know it is. Now how old are you on this day? I'm 17. I'm 17. Uh, 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 that, oh, and it's, and it's shy. 
You ain't grew up in the shy. You don't remember the birthday songs on the radio with GCI, right? And motherfuckers the yelling out their zodiac signs. Okay, the zodiac sign is a part of reading constellations. Now, if you watch my lecture on constellations, you now understand that there's no such thing as a constellation. Those are actually galaxies, right? And in the, and we're in the ninth universe right now. Planet Earth that you know of is located in the ninth universe. Okay, we're in the ninth universe. I come from the eighth universe. That's why you've heard me say grandmaster teacher of the eighth universe because that's what I am in, in the eighth universe. I'm not the grandmaster teacher of this universe. You have other beings in position for that. You get what I'm saying? However, I did come back to this universe to aid and assist in the growth and development of the human being race as well as the gods and goddesses and planet Kai herself. That's why I signed up for this lifetime and this soul contract. I remember who I am. Do you remember who you are? Okay then, let's keep it going. So, now, we are located, your planet that you are on right now, called Earth, right? Which is really planet Kai, or Tiamat, whatever name you want to use. You are located in the ninth universe. Okay? We come from the Sirius star system, which is also where? In the ninth universe. Okay? But, each universe is composed of how many galaxies? 999. I taught y'all that. So, it's 999 galaxies in this ninth universe alone. And each galaxy is composed of 999 planets. So, that's why I put the lecture out on YouTube about the constellations so that you can know that when you're reading the constellations, you're really looking at galaxies. This is where all uh, that hot sauce names, call them hot sauce names, come from. Okay? Now, from Hot Sauce 19 names, okay? Now, hold on to that thought. Don't let it go. Stay right there with it. Don't leave. Stay right there. Thank you. Hold it. Don't sit it down. Remember what I just told you. So, when you talk about, I'm a Virgo. I'm a Sagittarius. I'm a Gemini. I'm a Cancer. You get the name of your Zodiac and shit? That's divination work. Because the zodiac sign is a part of astrology. That's all considered astrology. Not astronomy. Astronomy and astrology are two different things. Just like polygamy and polygamy are two different things. See what I'm saying? Polygamy with an M-Y on the end. That, that means when a wife can have as many husbands as she wants. And a husband can have as many wives as he want. Fuck around. It's 20 of y'all in the goddamn relationship. That's polygamy. Polygamy is when a wife is submissive and has a sister wife to her husband. And the husband has as many wives as he can take care of. That's polygamy. Okay, so the same thing with astrology and astronomy. Astronomy is the study of like the planets and, you know... The comets and meteors, even though we know they're not that. But comets and meteors, planets, Orion's belt, you know, um, um, the Milky Way, you know, you know, you know, shit like that, you know. That's astronomy. And astronomy stops at, at Pluto. Astronomy don't take you to no other universes. Astronomy says that this is the only fucking universe and there are only nine planets. And on these nine planets are all rotating around one big ass sun that is burning. All right. And all of these planets, including this one, is rotating a thousand miles per hour on its axis around one sun. That's astronomy. See what I'm saying? Astrology is when you start reading the energies from the zodiacs. And the zodiacs are a part of constellations, which we know are now what, y'all? Galaxies. So astrology is the, your, the energy that you came here on. That's all a part of divination work. Astrology, tarot reading, palm reading. Because when you get in the reading, they got the cards out. That's tarot. That's divination work. Divination is another word for fucking magic. Divination ain't nothing but a big ass fancy word for magic. And here you is talking about magic ain't real. Then why you talking about you a cancer folk? Why you dropping your zodiac sign? Shout out to Chicago all day. That's the crib. 
Why you dropping your Zodiac sign? You see what I'm saying? I say drop your Zodiac sign right now. This bitch gonna chat gonna go up. All you gonna see is purple. Niggas gonna be gang baby. Nigga, we sad just over here. Nigga, we Aries run it. That's all it takes is one sign to say who run it. The whole chat going up immediately. You can't help yourself, right? <laughs> That's all divination work, though. What, what do you think make you a Cancer? What makes you a Gemini? Why does the Gemini have two twin faces? Why does the lion represent the Leo? Why is it 12? And it's amazing. It's 12 zodiacs, and we got 12 universes. Nine universes plus three alternates. See what I'm saying? Two plus one is three. We understand the power of three to six and nine. Numerology, all of that, two plus one is three. That's numerology. That's definition work. Numerology, tarot reading, scrying. Scrying is when you could read the water and give somebody a reading off the water. That's scrying. You got candle magic. Where a motherfucker take a big candle and give you a reading based upon the way the wax burns on the candle or the way the fire moves. Did you know that? You got to read the fire. The fire the fire represents energy. The fire know what energy's in the room. When you see the fire standing tall like that, that means whoever lit that candle has a lot of high vibrational, powerful spiritual protection around them. That's why the fuck the candle standing so tall. But if you don't know nothing about candle magic, the flame. I'm talking about the flame. The flame. But if you don't know, understand candle magic or how to read the fire and read the wax, even the way the wax burn, all that has a meaning. Because when you light the, when you light it, you see the power in the room with me right now? You see how tall the, the flame standing? But if it was a weak flame or it was flickering or dancing, you would know like, okay, the energy ain't there with it. You light it and you see the, the fire, the, the, the flame standing that tall, both of them. A ruler right here with me. He like, yeah, I want them to see me. I want them to know about divination work and that I'm the Orisha that presides over that. I mean, Shango, Shango is good with divination work too. That's another Orisha, Shango. But this is his field though. He like the oracle of the Orishas. See what I'm saying? So, the way the wax melt means something. The way the fire burns, is it standing tall? Is it dancing? Is it flickering? Is it jumping? Is the wax running over? Is the wax dripping to the left, the right, in front, behind? That all means something. That all has a different story. The right of the candle deal with the past. The left deals with the future. The, it all different, you know, it get deep. That's all a part of divination work. This is what your ancestors did. We wasn't looking at no motherfucking clock. Nigga, we had no lights, nigga. See what I'm saying? We used the elements. See what I'm saying? You can ask me any question you want, and I'll ask that question to the flame, and the flame is going to adjust based upon your fucking question. I can ask the flame, like, I could get your name and be like, this person's name, or do they have a good or bad energy? And based upon the way the candle star burn and the flame move, move gonna say everything I need to know. That's how deep divination work runs. But those abilities have been taken from you because, you know, they got you thinking it ain't real. But that's a part of divination work. That's all divination work. It's true. Somebody can read the palm of your hand. All that's clairvoyance. All that's, all that's real. But you must understand that that all fall in the divination work. Just understand what the work is called. That's all I'm trying to get you to see. Casting spells and all that shit, that's divination work. Your zodiac sign, that's divination. You feel me? So that's why I would I would never play, I would never play like that. I would never play and be like, hey, I'm going to do a reading with you. That's a spiritual thing. You get what I'm saying? That's a spiritual thing, so I'm not going to play like that. That goes much deeper than somebody else. This is what I'm trying to get you to say. Get y'all to see. You see what I'm saying? That's a spiritual thing. 
And like I told you, if you want to know if you're the people that do go get readings, first off, be careful with that type of stuff. Because I can act like a person can act like they're going to do a reading for you and then cast all type of negative energy over you. What's up, Cindy? Cast all type of negative energy over you. But I'm going to keep it real with y'all. Keep it real over rich with you. If you want to know if a person is legit, look at their page. If they got pictures and shit, they ain't legit. So, for example, if I was doing readings, I wouldn't have no fucking pictures online. I'm a spiritual medium. Why would I do that? Most people that's doing readings and doing any type of work, they don't have pictures online. Why? Because they know that all it takes is a motherfucker to get your picture and go to work on your ass off your picture. So if anybody ever hit y'all up, I do readings. Let me save y'all some money and some time. Because you got to understand, spirituality is coming back full force because it never really left. You feel what I'm saying? So you got a lot of people right now trying to make money off this spiritual world. And they don't understand they're going to fuck themselves up in the long run, though. But right now, they are using spirituality to make money. They don't care about the advancement of us or a plan or any of that. They literally doing it to make a dollar. And see, you can scam a lot of things, but don't you can't play like that. You can. I wouldn't do it if you knew what you was up against. I wouldn't play like that. See what I'm saying? But if you got the type of nuts, you will let them hang all the way to the motherfucking underworld. Hey, suit your motherfucking self. See what I'm saying? If an individual say that they do readings, they will not have no pictures on their page. They'll have pictures, but it won't be none of their ass. Because they working. And you open yourself up to a tax like that. Or they need your picture. You want to get deep? Nigga don't even need your picture. They just need your name. They only need your name. They don't even need your picture. But if they got your picture, it's that much more powerful. And you better realize these Baba Lives out here. Listen, you got them out here, man. You are in a spiritual warfare. So although you might just be found out about the spiritual journey, you got people that ain't just found out. And they've been doing this a long time. Get what I'm saying? They've been doing this a very long time. And they will challenge and they will attack and cast you. And if they cast something towards you, now you got to fight that energy off by recasting shit back and doing reversals and all type of shit. You feel me? But this is our ruler though. You might have seen him before. But yeah, this is our ruler. You feel me? I'm going to do a separate lecture on him though. I'm going to go all into his story. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, like... That's what I want to say, too. Don't be scared to make y'all ancestor altars, man. If you don't know where to start, that's okay. But make them. They're going to be needed. They're going to be needed. Be cool on them stairs, man. They're going to be needed. You heard me? They're going to be needed. You got to get back. We got to get back to the spiritual aspect of everything. Feel me? We just can't take information in without bringing, calling in ancestral protection. Calling these energies. You got to call them in. They're not just going to step in. I keep telling you that. You have to call them in. Why do you think they had us donating our energy to Jesus? See what I'm saying? We was calling on him. People, we were calling. Remember church? We was in church doing what? Calling on Jesus' name. That's what we was doing. When we prayed, we gave all our chi, all our ashe to this Jesus. Because we did what? We believed that he was the change. He was the source of change for us. But the you got to look at what the oppressors did. They understand the mechanics of you. We are mechanically, we are hardwired that way naturally though. Because before we was praying to Jesus, we was lighting candles. We was ha having group gatherings and doing rituals together. We were doing rituals just for the wind. We would sing to the fire. 
We would do whole rituals just for the for the soil, for the earth, for Kai. We would do rituals for the water. We would come together. I keep telling you, go research the Haitian Revolution. How you think we won in the Haitian Revolution? Guess what spiritual energy they was calling in? Ogun. The warrior Orisha. The Orishas is a family of spiritual deities. Okay? And they are good to call in because they be warring with all the entities. So, if you in a physical body having a spiritual war with the devil, with, with Satan, Zeus, and his entities, you at a disadvantage because you're trying to fight a spiritual battle from a physical vessel. This is why we called in the angels. Because you ain't, like I said, the Orishas is just one spiritual family. You have millions of different spiritual families. Most of them get lost over time. You'll never hear about them. The story of the Orishas just happened to stick around. And even they watered that down. Because by the time they hit Cuba, what we know as Cuba, now they got the Orishas mixed up with the saints. You go look at the African pantheon of spirituality with the Orishas. It's a lot more solid than when you when you get to Cuba. Because by the time you get to Cuba, they already put their foot on our neck. Remember, the Cubans is us. But by the time you get to Cuba, now Orula is Saint Francis and Legba is Saint. You know what I'm saying? They got they turned them into saints because they were trying to hide the practice. So our ancestors, they didn't turn the Orishas to saints, literally. But they, they, they came up with saint names for them so that the slave masters would believe that we were worshiping the Catholic religion. Our ancestors had to hide it after we fell so far and some of us started losing and getting actually captured into slavery. Because remember, we was never enslaved. Only a small percentage of us was. So out of the whole populace, out of our whole populace, maybe 10% of us, 90% of our ass was straight warring. This is what the Gullah War is about. That's what the Civil War was about. The Mexican-American Revolutionary. All these wars that they doctored up to make it look like it was the U.S. versus someone else. They was fighting us the whole time. Some of us would get caught. And out of that few that would get caught, those are the ones that became slaves on the plantation. Hey, Sim, this ain't pouncing time. Chill out. I'm, I'm, I'm lecturing right now. You about to go full-fledged Frenchie on me. Chill out, young God. But... Basically, we was in a warring state with our oppressor. We were in a warring state with our oppressor. So by us being in a warring state, we were never enslaved. And a few of us did, they would get caught. Those are the ones they enslaved. Like I, like I taught in my lecture on, on, on keep drilling this in y'all head. This is my job as an intellect to drill it in you. Hearing it once ain't going to do it because you done heard bullshit forever. I said this in the lecture on either the YouTube or the website. I said, go research the Gullah Wars, man. Go research the Haitian Revolution, man. Feel me? All the Gullah Wars. They're going to research the Punic Wars. Fuck it. Go into the Christians versus the Muslims War. Go into the war of the Moors versus Europe. After they broke out of the spells and they went to war, Europe and lost. We ain't become pussy to 14, I mean to 6 to 1863. The Emancipation Proclamation officially made us some bitches. I'm going to just keep it real over rich. Before that, we was gangsters, nigga. You know what I'm saying? After the Emancipation Proclamation, we got all soft and nice, and now we want to be citizens. We not citizens. Do you know what a citizen even is? Research the etymology of what a citizen even is. We not citizens. Yeah. We've never been citizens of this republic and never will motherfucking be. So I don't even know why niggas be sitting there born in rights. Why are they doing this to black people? Why we got to get locked up? Why are they giving us the shit in of the stick? And that's why you need to go read the Gullah Wars. That's why you need to go read up on some of these wars. Just a few, not too many, just a few. Get your feet wet.
Get your thalamus gland working a little bit in there. Get, get your thalamus gland. Get it juicy. Get a little juicy. You see what I'm saying? Because you wouldn't ask them stupid ass redundant questions like that. You know? Why? Why us? You shouldn't mistreat somebody because of the color of their skin. You got damn right. You definitely shouldn't mistreat someone because of the color of their skin. Uh, let me use their words. Pigmentation. I love that word, y'all. I like when they got these other words for some simple shit. You know what I'm saying? Because once you learn they shit, you're like, oh, I see what they be doing. But, right. Why us, y'all? <laughs> Nigga, could we black? It ain't got nothing to do with you being black. You feel me? And it definitely ain't got shit to do with your skin. You think... They doing all this killing? Because it is? Because you're a little darker than them? You really believe it? Do, do, do they help you sleep at night? All these hundreds of eight man-made years of killing. Poisoning your food, resources, everything. You think they did this because you're black? Or Latino? It's more to that story, man. What were you doing? What was your ancestors doing? Why they on your ass so hard? Who are you? You see? You got to ask them questions now. They gunning for you too hard. They gunning for us too hard. You got to sit back like, hold on now. They gunning for us too hard. Who are we? What are we? What am I? Right. And then you come sitting in a lecture from Rashad Jamal and you be like, he say we gods and goddesses and we made this planet and we not even from here. Yeah, that should have blow your mind. You're like, what? That should sound crazy. But then when you hear everything you've done, it actually makes sense. You be like, hold on. Well, if we did all this shit, they just jealous. Oh, okay, there it go. We know jealousy will make you do anything. Because they can attack us all day. But they cannot erase what we did. Ever. That's the thing about a lie. Even when they lie to you and me and taught us that we wasn't shit. But some Africans with baskets of fruit on our head. Guess what? They still pissed off because they know it's not the truth. They know. They got to wake up and go to sleep and know that we built everything on this motherfucker, including them. Fuck what you know. They got to live with it. And that start eating at them. That start eating at them. And they come up with another fucking weapon for your ass. This year is AIDS. Next year is syphilis. The year after that, it was anthrax. The year after that, it was chicken flu. The year after that, chicken pox. The year after that. Now you start realizing, like, why they be, that's why they be remixing these motherfucking viruses like that. That's why they poisoning the water and the food. Oh, okay. That's why they created abortion clinics. Nigga, it wasn't no abortion clinics. That's unnatural. To get an abortion is unnatural. And they are against what? They are against nature. We not talk about when we didn't know. And we went in. Had sex with a goddess and she had to get an abortion. You didn't know. Oh, you get an abortion. I can't afford the baby. Let's get an abortion because I don't want to bring the baby into the world. And not. We've done that before. I did that. I'm like 16, 17. I got a couple goddesses pregnant and we had to get abortions. I'm like 17, 18, 19. I didn't know. I didn't remember the shit I remember now. I was still under their fucking spell. I was still under their spell. So fuck us. We don't count. They fucking know why they made it though. And while they pushing abortion clinics to our people, they try to figure out how to have more fucking babies. Pay attention. But it's unnatural. It's unnatural. It's unnatural. It's unnatural. So that's all you should look at. They are against nature. They are against nature. Why do they want our numbers so small? They want us, our number's small. They don't want you to have that many. They don't want you to have that many. You need to be asking why. Why do they want more of us? You feel me?
Because it's already hard to keep up with the motherfuckers that's already here. It's not easy trying to control a billion plus souls. That's a lot of work. It's a lot of stress. It's a lot of lies. More overly, that's a lot of lies. You feel me? This is why they have what's called the system in play. The system helps them keep all us in fear and in their control with lies, propaganda, misnomers, false rhetoric, an incomplete version of true historical facts. You think Black Wall Street was only in Tulsa? At least how they limit us? And we had to find out about Black Wall Street on our own. They don't teach you that in school. We ain't hear shit about shit. Very Black History Month. I ain't never heard shit about Black Wall Street, y'all. Y'all have... Hey, y'all in the back. Y'all ever heard about Black Wall Street at Black History Month? Hey, y'all in the third row in class, y'all y'all heard about it? I ain't never here. I'm just trying to make sure because they might have skipped our generation to hit y'all's. Y'all hear? Y'all get that today? Oh, okay. Right. And that's just Black Wall Street. We go way deeper than Black Wall Street in here. We talk about we how we created the fucking planet, these realms, the animals, the insects, different dimensions and vortexes and all this life going on around. They don't get to none of that. They don't even want to tell you about Tulsa, Black Wall Street. You get what I'm saying? They don't even want to tell you about Tulsa, Black.